Hi creative friends, Sonia here from Sustain My Craft Habit. Today I'm going to show you how to sew by hand four different types of buttons. I have all of the supplies you need to sew a button. So first of all is the button. And here are four different types of buttons that I'm going to sew. So this is a two hole fat, flat button. This is a four hole flat button. This is a shank style button so that you can tell there's no holes on the front. And then on the back, there's this little part that sticks out with the hole running through it. So that's a shank style. And then I also have this for a different type of closure that you usually see on dress pants and it's called a hook and bar closure. So I will show you how to attach that button as well, or that closure as well. Next, you'll need a sewing uh, needle. You'll need a needle and thread. So it's always best to use thread that matches your material or your button. But for this video, I'm going to use a contrast color so that you'll be able to see it on the fabric and button. You'll need a pair of scissors for cutting the thread. And then I just have some fabric scraps that I will sew the buttons to. So let's get started. Okay, so to sew a button that has two holes in it, what you need is your needle with your thread. And I've already threaded the needle through the eye here. I have 24 inches in length that I cut of my thread. Normally you wanna use thread that matches your button or your fabric, but I'm gonna use a contrast color so you can see it on the fabric. To start, you wanna thread that length of thread through the needle and then pull it all the way through until the ends meet here. And once you get to the end, what you want to do is knot the, the ends together. Just like that. So now that you have your needle ready, you want to go to your fabric. And I have the two layers of fabric here and I've marked a spot for the button. So just here in the center. So I'm going to act as if this is the wrong side of my fabric and this is the right side of my fabric. So starting on the wrong side where I've marked it, I'm going to take my needle and poke it all the way through the fabric and then pull the needle just gently because if I was to pull it really hard, it would pull the whole knotted ends through as well. So see, I've pulled it, but there's a loop here. So just always double check the back side to make sure there's not a loop here. So I'm going to pull gently on the front end on both, both pieces and now that loop is gone. So I'm ready to, to continue. To be sure that this isn't gonna come, the, new, the knot isn't going to come through, what I like to do is just repeat um, the needle going through to the back and then the front again, just to help secure the thread in place. So I've gone back through the right, to, through to the back side, and now I'm gonna go back again and around the same area over to the front. Okay, so now this is the front of my fabric and I have my needle and my thread is all ready to go. So I'm gonna take my button and poke through one of the holes and then pull it all the way through so that my fabric is flush to the fabric. And then with the other needle or with the other hole, I'm going to poke it with the needle and pull it all the way through. And now my button again is flush with the fabric. So holding the fabric and the button in one hand, I'm going to look just behind the button to find the placement of the other stitches and poke it through all the way um, to the other side, pulling it. So now this button is flush, but it's not secure. It's only been stitched one time. Basically, I'm just gonna repeat that step three more times to help secure the button in place. Once again, I'm gonna go back in through the area that I already pierced the fabric. And then I'm always gonna repeat the same direction. So from this hole to that hole, three times. Okay, so that's three times, I think that's good. To finish, what I'm going to do is, my thread is on the back side, I want to poke the needle through to the 
front, but not go through the, the hole on the buttons. I'm just gonna let the needle pierce through behind the button, pull the thread up and through as much as it goes, and then I'm going to wrap it around the button three times. Then moving the fabric away, I'm going to push the needle through the thread that's behind the button. And as I pull the needle through, I'm going to loop the needle, creating a knot. So that's securing the thread. And then I just like to do that another time, just to be extra sure that it's secure. I'm pulling it tight, and I can trim the ends on the back too if they're hanging too long. And then that's it, the button is attached. Okay, so now similar to the two hole buttons, I have these buttons that have four holes in them. And there's two different ways you can attach them. Uh, so I'm gonna show you both ways. And you wanna start with the same materials as, as with a two hole button. So you have your needle and then your thread and it's 24 inches that I've cut. So I'm gonna start with that. And um, I'm going to take my fabric and I have two spots here marked for both buttons. So let's start with one. I'm acting as this is the back side of my fabric and then this is the right side. So starting on, oh, making sure that the ends of your thread are knotted. I'm going to poke the needle through where I've marked it from the back side and then I'm gonna pull it gently to the front, making sure that I don't have any loops here forming. And then I'm going to poke the needle through again to the back side and then once again to the front. And then double check, see I've got some loops here. So you just wanna always be cognizant of what's happening on the back side. So you just you can play around with that thread to loosen it and then again pull on it to get it flush. So if you find your threads knotting quite a bit, you can buy some thread, some wax for thread and it basically just run the thread through the wax and it really helps to control the thread and keeps it from knotting and getting all tangled up. If you plan on doing a lot of button sewing, then it might be a good idea to get. Okay, so now that I'm on the front side, I'm going to take my button, my four hole button, and I'm going to do a crisscross pattern with this button. So I've, I've threaded the needle through one of the holes and I'm going to go across on a diagonal to the button, to this button hole here. And then I'm just gonna pull on the thread so that the button lays flat and then tuck the needle in behind where the other stitches or where the thread initially punctured through the fabric. And I'm going to push it through again and then pull it out on the, the reverse side. So now the button is flush to the fabric, but it's definitely not secure. So I wanna go ahead and repeat that step once again, but instead of going through the same holes that I just went through, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction, also on a diagonal. So I'm gonna poke the fabric through once again from the back side, and then just kind of gently feel around for that hole that hasn't been stitched yet. And now again, on a diagonal, I'm going to go um, back through the hole, the other hole, pull it gently, and then work my needle through to the back side. Again, staying close to the area where it was originally, where I, re I previously marked it. Okay, so now that's the crisscrossing pattern. I'll show you a close up. So now that that's been uh, secured one time, I'm going to repeat that um, three more times to secure the button to the fabric. And again, I'm going to repeat the pattern. So I'm going to start from this hole and then I'm going to push it through that hole and then up this one and down and just continue that pattern, that cr crisscrossing pattern. If you push your needle through and it comes up one of the other holes, just take it back out, pull it back out, and then try again. So I pulled it, but if you can take a look, it has a little bit of a loop here. Again, because I didn't, I didn't pull the thread evenly. So before I go back for my last pass through, I'm just gonna gently pull on both sides of the thread to get rid of that loop. 
Okay, so that's good. The button's on there nice and secure. And I have this intersect, this crisscrossing pattern um, on the front of my button. And now just to tie off the thread, again, I'm going to go through the fabric, but not through the button, just on the back side and pull it all the way through. And then I'm going to wrap it around the button and then create a loop to knot the thread end. And then just repeat that one more time so that it's nice and secure. Pull on the thread and then trim it. So now for the other button that I'm gonna place beside it, I need, again, 24 inches. That's not gonna be long enough to do another button, so I need some more thread. Instead of a crisscrossing pattern, I'm going to do just some straight stitches. See, that one went all the way through. So that's what I mean by being um, gentle when you pull it. So let me try that again. And to make sure it's secure, I'm gonna go back and through one more time. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm ready. I'm gonna take the button. I'm gonna go through the one hole. And instead of doing a diagonal pass through, I'm gonna just do one directly. I'm gonna go through one of the holes directly beside the first hole. And now I'm gonna go back up through one of the holes that I haven't secured yet. And then back down one of the other, the final hole. Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat that another three times to secure. Okay, so that's pretty secure now and I've poked the needle through to the front side and then I'm gonna wrap it around the back of the button and loop the thread to secure it and pull on it and then one more time, do the same thing and trim. So now this is a two different ways to stitch on a four hole button and then that's the reverse side. So I'm gonna trim these loose ends. Okay, so I'm gonna show you just a practical uh, example of how to sew a button on a shirt. So I have this woven shirt here that um, has a missing button along the front here. And the nice thing about these woven shirts is that usually you'll have a spare button along the placket that uh, they include when you buy the shirt. Or sometimes you can also find them on the care label or the content label that's on the side of the, on the, side of the shirt. My spare button is right here. So I'm going to remove it carefully using a pair of seam rippers or other snippers if you just take, it, take your time not to cut the fabric. And because I want it to look like the shirt originally, I'm going to use this button and I see that they've used a black thread to stitch the button on. So I'm going to do that as well and use my uh, black thread and I have a needle here already threaded with 24 inches. Thread and the ends of the thread are, are knotted together. So it's pretty clear on this shirt where the button needs to go because there's left, it left a little bit of a mark. But if it was not clear, what I would do is place the shirt down flat on the table and button it up. like so. So here, now I know my other button is missing here. This is where it needs to go. So if I didn't know where it was, I would lay it down flat like this and grab a um, washable pen or washable marker or wax and mark it. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I have my wax, I have a pin, and then I'm just gonna poke the fabric or the shirt through the buttonhole all the way through and that's basically gonna mark where the button needs to go. And very carefully, I'm just gonna mark the placement. I don't typically like to mark it on the front side because I don't want it to be visible. 
So what I can do is because my needle's poked all the way through to the reverse side, I'm just gonna mark it with the wax there as well and then remove the, the pin and put that aside. And now I have the placement where I need to attach the button. So I can undo all of the buttons. And this button that is a four hole button and I wanna look to see how these buttons were originally attached because I wanna repeat the same pattern and I see that it's a crisscrossing pattern. So I'm going to do the exact same thing when I attach this button. So starting from the reverse side, I'm going to poke the needle through just gently and then come back up through the right side. Now I'm gonna take the button and thread it through one of the holes. And then on a diagonal, I'm going to thread it through the other hole and then let it fall to the fabric. And I'm going to poke the needle through to the back and around the same area that I just stitched through. And then pull it. Now I'm gonna come back around and do a crisscrossing pattern to um, secure the button. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that three more times and then knot it off like I did with the other buttons. And that's it, that's how it's done. Okay, so for this next button, I have a shank style button. And this is basically a button that looks like there is no holes from the front. And when you flip it around, you have this little part that sticks out with a hole through it. Sometimes it's more of um, a larger loop on the back. And sometimes you have this as like part of a plastic mold or it's just a hole that runs through on basically on the perpendicular angle to the button. So what I'm going to do is also with my needle that I've threaded, I'm just gonna knot the ends again. And in the spot that I've marked my fabric, this is the wrong side, I'm going to start and poke the needle through to the right side and then gently, and then back, come down back again in the same spot. And then once again, come back to the front of my fabric where I want the button to be attached to. I'm gonna grab this shank button and I'm going to thread the back of the button, the hole in the back of the button with my needle and then pull the needle all the way through. And with the fabric in my hand, I'm going to poke the needle back through to the back side. And as I pull my needle and my thread, the button's going to well, kind of twist around actually, but it'll come tight to the fabric and just double check that it hasn't twisted all your fabric like mine has. So just kind of clean it up like that. And then again, pull the fabric through um, or pull the, the thread through so it's nice and tight. Okay, so now it's been looped on once and that's obviously not enough. So I'm just gonna repeat that step and um, continue another three times. So go through to the front of the fabric. And if you can't get it to poke through the needle right or through the button right away uh, you can do it in two steps so i'm just going to pull the thread through all the way okay and then i'm going to thread it through the back of the shank button to the other side and then back to the back side so again to the front What we want to do is try to make sure you're going in the same direction. So if you're going working this way, so try not to turn your, your piece around too much. Okay, so now I've done that three more times and my shank feels um, really secure. So what I'm going to do is just knot off the thread. So like before, go to the front side of the fabric behind the button. Don't go through the hole again. And then just wrap the thread around the other thread that was there, securing the button to the fabric and create a loop with your needle and thread and then pull on the thread to secure it. 
Okay, and then trim the thread. And that's the shank button. So the last thing I wanted to show you was how to attach this type of a closure. So it's called a hook and bar closure. And you see similar, this is um, a replacement hook and bar that I bought at a fabric store. And um, typically you see this type of closure on pants and like dress pants, specifically dress pants. So I'll just show you a pair, a couple of dress pants and they have this style of closure. So it's really nice because it's done and it's invisible. You don't see it on the front of the waistband. You don't see a button, you don't see any of the thread coming through or anything. So it's really nice clean option, but these are done um, by a machine when they manufacture them. So you can't get this look at home, but if something were to, if you were making your pants at home, for example, and you wanted this sort of style, this is the closure I would choose to use. Or if for some reason this broke off and you need a replacement, this again would be um, the type of uh, closure I would put. So that's on this pant. I also have it similar, but larger in size also on this pant too. So basically they just hook together. You have the bar facing out and then you have the hook facing inward. So I'm going to show you how to attach that to a waistband if you happen to need to do so. So I have a pant that I actually had to fix because my, my husband bought these pants and only after wearing them one time, there was some kind of a snap. Yeah, it was a snap that was on this waistband that completely just fell off and left these holes actually in the waistband. You can't replace those and there's no button hole and button which could easily be stitched back on. But because it's something that's attached using a machine, we can't replicate it at home. But instead, just so that these pants are still gonna be wearable for him, I'm going to attach these this hook and bar closure onto the waistband. The other thing I did before is I sewed on this patch of fabric onto the waistband so that it covered the hole that was directly through all layers of the fabric. So now I'll be able to stitch the bar onto this fabric. It also looks better than a big hole in the waistband, but this one here, you see the hole on the right, the front side. I could have covered it on this side, but I didn't bother. I did cover it on this side though on the inside and that's where I'll be um, attaching the the hook of the closure. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna zip up the pant, let the, pa the waistband lay flat, and then mark where the closure is going to go. So I can take my needle or a pin will also do, but basically I'm going to just poke it through where I want the bar and the hook to align. So I'm marking it on this side and that side of the waistband. This is a washable wax, so I'm not worried about the yellow staying visible. Normally I would use black thread, but because I want you to be able to see the stitch, I'm gonna use this contrasting blue color. So I've threaded 24 inches onto the needle and I've knotted the ends. So now I am ready to stitch on the bar. So I've marked this, I'm going to attach this part of the, comp the this component of the closure. And you wanna have the bar, rather the hook, centered over top of where you mark. And you wanna have it where this clean end is facing out towards the center. Okay, so first, so I have the placement, I'm holding it with my one thumb. And then I'm just going to stick my needle through the fabric and I'm going to avoid going all the way through the waistband, just through a few of the later layers on the inside so that it's not visible. So that's kind of where I'm ready to start. I've pulled the thread all the way through. I'm just gonna do that one more time just so it's secure, like so. So now this bar, or this hook rather, has these holes. So they're meant for you to stitch to use to stitch it onto the fabric. So I'm gonna go up through one hole and then back down another, and then through the waistband. Not all the way through. I don't have anything showing on that side, just through the inside. And then I'm going to pull the needle and the thread 
tight. So now the bar is flush to the fabric and it's secured on the top. So I'm gonna do that a couple more times to secure it there before I move on to the other th two spots. Okay, so now the top is secure here. I don't want to necessarily cut the thread and knot it again, so I'm going to run the, the needle and the thread in underneath the bar and then come up to the side here where I'm going to stitch it again. If you find the needle's hard to push through, you can always use a thimble so you don't poke your finger. Okay, so I've secured it about three times. So now I'm going to take it from the side and then work the needle down to the bottom part of the hook where I'm going to then finish attaching it to the waistband. So if there's any loops anywhere, again, you just take your time and just work them out. So I have a bit of a loop here. So I'm going to pull on one end first and then, yep, that did it. So now it's just a matter of securing the last holes the last two holes at the bottom. Okay, so here's the hook and the bar on the waistband. So now um, when the front is done up, these two hook together and the waistband, and now the hand can be worn. So now the, the waistband is joined together. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. And for more simple sewing projects and tutorials, visit sustainmycrafthabit.com.